All right. So let's talk about vortex math. All right. Vortex math is the understanding that there is a flow of numbers that can generate energy. That's the best way of putting it. And this flow is a total flow. Okay. So everything from medicine, math, science, um, energy is all encompassed in a total flow. And so they thought that the same thing applied to numbers. If you take and you put a nine at the top, a one, a two, a three, a four, five, a six, a seven, and an eight. Okay. Very simple. Draw a circle, align it. The first thing you're going to notice is you're going to notice your three, six, and nine stand out quite prevalently because they make a perfect equilateral triangle. Okay. And if you know Tesla, of course, his quote about three, six, nine is the first thing you would have stand out to you. So you've got your first triangle right here, which is a three, six, and nine. So we're just going to go ahead and write that three, six, and nine. Okay. Now, the next thing that we have is we notice that there is a, quite a few of those. So we're going to take that one, that seven, and that four, which again, if you know your chakras, right? You know that the starting point of a chakra journey is going to be 174 frequency because that's your thought. That's your thought frequency. Uh, Tesla also said, if you remember, he said that if you want to understand the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Now, what's really cool about this, and a lot of people don't know this, is in sacred geometry, you actually have something that represents these three as well. You have what is called the edges, the vortices, and the faces. Okay, so just a little bit of a, a twist there. It's not just energy, frequency, and vibration. It can be edges, uh, vortices, and faces when you're talking about sacred geometry. So we have our three, six, and nine. We know that one, seven, and four is going to be very important. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and draw from there. Okay, so now we have kind of like an offside star of David, which leaves us with a remainder of two, eight, and five. Okay. So we go ahead and draw that. You have officially created what is called a moving star tetrahedron. It means that the three, six, and nine stay stationary. It does not move. It means that the one, seven, and four, right? One, seven, and four, which equals frequency is going to move. And it also means that the two, eight, and five, uh, I'm sorry, the two, five, and eight, depending on which way you want to do it, it's completely up to you, but uh, is going to be the vibration. Vibration and frequency are illusions, okay? They require light to be something, okay? They are illusions. Three, six, and nine is energy, requires nothing, self-sustains, runs by itself. So the idea was that if you, so we're going to redo this real quick. All right. Oh, this is like way off. Hold on. <laughs> I wish I had like something that would instantly draw this. Okay. So vortex math is taking these numbers, the illusions, and seeing what ends up happening with just those, leaving out the three, six, and nine. Okay. And vortex math was discovered by binary. Okay, binary code or binary is two. That's all that it means, it's two. So if I were to take one times two, I get two. If I take two times two, I get four. If I take four times two, I get eight. If I get eight times two, I get 16. But remember, one plus six is seven. If I get 16 times two, I end up with 32, which is a five. And if I take uh, 32 times two, I end up with 64, which is 10. Six plus four, it's gonna be a uh, 10. And one plus zero is gonna be one. So as you can see right here, just by doing basic binary, I end up with two, four, eight, seven, five, one. When remember, vortex math is one, two, four, eight, seven, and five. It's a pattern that continues going on. And I'm going to show you how that continues going on past that number. So let's just go ahead and do it. Start again. We'll do uh, one times two. It's going to be two. And two times two, it's going to be four. Four times two, 
It's going to be 8. 8 times 2 is going to be 16, just 7. Uh, 16 times 2 is going to be 32, which is going to be a 5. 32 times 2 is going to be a 64, which is going to be a 10, which is going to be a 1. But 64 times 2, right, is going to be 128. And that's going to be, so I take 8 plus 2 is going to be 10, plus that is going to be 11. So I'm right back at 2. Okay, 128 times 2 is going to be, I'm, I'm guessing you can guess this, right? So if we're at 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, 1, 2, should be a 4, right? So I'm guessing you can figure this out because we've got 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, 1, and then 2. So this is going to be a 4. So 128 times 2 is going to be 256. So we got 11, right? And then we got 12, 13. 13, 1 plus 3 is going to be a 4. If I continue going on and on, all that is going to happen to infinity is I am going to repeat 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, forever. Forever. It will not stop. It will keep going forever. So the understanding is that when you are dealing with binary, you end up with this pattern, and this pattern is called vortex math. So what we did is we plotted it on our circle. If we plot 1, 2, we got four, eight, seven, and five. So if we draw one to two, two to four, four to eight, eight to seven, seven to five, five back to one, you in this shape right here. This shape is absolutely awesome. Okay. This shape generates energy because if I were to drop a photon here and a photon here, it's going to travel, right? And then it's going to hit right here in the center and when it hits right here in the center it is going to generate enough energy to keep it going forever we have been able to do this with coils spinning them around generating energy temporarily uh sustaining its own energy however we haven't gone much further than that there is not much that has come a vortex math short of being able to discuss it and talk about it okay it wasn't until I started noticing that it was an illusion that I started realizing that the purpose of this wasn't to focus on the vortex math side. It was to focus on the energy side, you see, because when you apply that same exact binary, right, three times two is six, all right, six times two is 12, which is a three, all right, if I were to keep going, 12 times two is going to be 24, which is a six, and 24 times two is going to end up being 48, which is a three. So when you apply binary, as in the same exact thing you do with the other numbers, you oscillate between three and six, six and three, and it goes on forever. So that's the first thing that stood out. So when Tesla said, if you only knew the magnificence of three, six and nine, you'd have a key to the universe, you're understanding right here instantly that three and six stand out differently than all those other numbers I showed you, than the vortex math numbers I showed you. But when you apply nine, well, that's when things got really interesting because nine times two is 18, okay? 18 is gonna be a digital root of nine, okay? Right? So 18 times two is gonna be 36, digital root of nine. 36 times 2 is 72, digital root of 9. So what was revealed is that vortex math gave you a digital root of 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, and 1, and, and then continued going on. When you applied 3 or 6 to the understanding of the same exact pattern that you got vortex math, you got different numbers. You got 3 and 6 that were oscillating back and forth, back and forth. When you applied 9, you ended up with the exact same number every single time. It did not change. No matter what number is here, it is always gonna be a digital root of nine, which is what led people to believe the understanding that nine is a very powerful number. It stood out, it was completion, it was alignment. And the best thing about nine is no matter what you're dealing with with nine, it will always come back to a completion. It'll always come back whole, okay? So for instance, even if you're dealing with 4.5, which I'm not a big fan of, uh, decimals and neither was um, uh, Archimedes and Plato because of the fact that decimals are just placeholders. Okay, four plus five is still going to be nine, 
And even if there's a point there for point plus point five is still going to be a point nine. So the understanding was that it does not matter what it is, it is always going to end up being a nine. Okay. So what's really cool about that is you can apply this knowledge to Okay, so if we take a cube, all right, we're gonna take a cube. I'm gonna show you something that's really cool about this. So if you take a cube and you have the options of one through eight, okay, so nine, remember if nine is not there, she's still there. And that's what I'm gonna show you guys. So you have the option of one through eight. So we're just gonna label these. I'm gonna do them two completely different ways. So we're gonna label these one, two, seven. We'll do this eight. We need this one, we'll do six five, and four. Oh, we're missing one. One, two, ah, and three. Okay. So what I'm going to show you is that nine is always going to be there, even if you don't see it, because there is no nine here at this point. But what I'm going to show you is that we're going to take top to bottom. We're going to take left to right. Okay. So we're going to take top to bottom. So the top has a one, a two, a seven, and a three. One plus two plus seven, plus three, okay? So we got 10, 11, 12, 13, 13. That's gonna be a digital root of four. Because I know that the top has a digital root of four, the bottom is going to have a digital root of five, okay? I'm gonna show you that. So if we go ahead and take the bottom, we've got five plus four, right? And we've got plus six plus eight, okay? So we know six plus eight is gonna have a digital root of five. Anytime you're dealing with eight, you just subtract one from the number. So six plus eight is gonna have a digital root of five. Five and four is nine, right? Nine plus five is going to be five, okay? But it's cool, top to bottom. Let's do left to right. Let's see if the same exact thing happens. So we're gonna draw a line basically through this point. We're gonna have the four on this side and the four on this side. So in this situation, we're gonna take one plus two, all right, so we're going to take one, two, six, and eight. Plus six, plus eight. Again, okay, we got eight and six is going to be a five, plus two is going to be a seven, plus one is going to be an eight. Now, by that logic, it means that my right hand side should be a digital root of one. Well, let's find out. If we take four plus five plus three plus seven, so we've got 10, which is going to be a one. I've got four plus five, which is going to be a nine, and nine plus one is one, okay? So the cool thing about this that I wanted to show you is that when you apply a cube, you can pick any numbers. You can arrange them any way that you want, and you will always reveal nine, even though you do not see it. Top, bottom, left, right, doesn't matter how you do it, front to back, it is always going to reveal nine, and that is what is so powerful about nine, all right?